Okay, so we're going to be doing a screen repair on this compact Presario 2100. Now, why does it even need a screen repair? Well, here's what happens when you turn it on. If you can see the blue lights, it gets power. But, there's nothing on the screen. Now, when I do that, and I, I turn a computer on, I, I try to see if there's what's wrong with the screen, I look closely at the screen, and you probably can't see it on this little crappy webcam. The HD video might pick it up. But, what you're basically looking at here is, come on now, there is a faint Windows image. You cannot, hard, I don't think you can see it on that webcam. The screen's actually working. I can see Windows written right there. And I don't know if the, the HD camera's picking it up a little bit. Tiny bit, you can see the Windows logo. Yeah, you can see the Windows logo very faintly. Okay, so there's a faint image on the screen. Well, that tells us a lot. That means that the screen isn't bad itself. It's not, the screen's not cracked. It's still able to produce an image. So, if it's able to produce an image, then what's wrong with it? Well, one of two things could be wrong with the screen at this point. The bulb that basically sits along the whole bottom of the screen, it's usually, it's the length of the screen, it's a fluorescent bulb. This is before they put LEDs in screens. It's actually a real fluorescent bulb, really skinny. Actually, I have one, I'll show you. They, I buy them, I used to buy them on eBay, they come in a long tube like this. This is not the bulb. The bulb's on the inside. They come in this long tube. They are super delicate. And that baby is a, is a bulb. If I push my fingers a little too hard in one direction, it'll snap that thing in half. Ooh. Now, I used to buy these on eBay. They're cheap. They're like 10 bucks a piece. And install them into the bottom of the screen. But screens are not meant to have that done to them. You almost always have to break the screen to get the bulb in. And even when you get the bulb in and put it all back together, it's, you're taking a chance. It's not the way. It's, they're not meant to be replaced. They're just not. Unless you have a real good streamlined procedure for doing it, I wouldn't recommend it. But you can do it. Ten bucks. They're CCFL. Um, carbon something something fluorescent. I don't know what it stands for. But if you do a search for CCFL on eBay, you'll see where you can buy the bulbs. And you can buy them in different sizes. And that'll fit the screen that you want to put them in. I used to do them. I did about five of them. All of them were a success. But it's such a pain in the neck, I don't do them anymore. If the bulb is bad, I replace the whole screen. That's what I do. Now, there's another thing that could be wrong that's causing this. And I don't know if you can see the faint image yet. It's come through a little bit more. Anyway, I got a window screen right here I can see. Um, the other thing that could be wrong is it's called an inverter board. And this is a piece of, of circuit board that sits right here in the bottom of the screen. And basically all that that does is it provides power to the bulb so the bulb can light up. So, if there's no backlight, but you're still seeing an image on the screen, that means either the bulb is burnt out, or the inverter board that's supposed to power the bulb is burnt out. Both of them will give you the same exact symptom. So, how do we find out which is which? Well, what I like to do is first see if the inverter is bad. I'll take another screen, and this is the only way, the best way I can figure out how to do it, guys. I'll take another screen that I have that I know is a bad screen, but I know has a good bulb. Like this screen, uh, I don't know if that has a good bulb. I usually write them on the back of these things. Okay, I write here. When I do a screen repair, I save the broken screen. This has a good bulb, but the colors are messed up on the screen. That's why we had to replace this screen for some customer. But I know the bulb's good. So I can put this and plug it in there, and if this thing lights up, then I know the inverter's good in this computer. Because the inverter powered this screen, it should be able to power this screen, but if it doesn't power this screen, then we know the, the bulb is bad. 
All right, I'm gonna power this down now, take the front bezel off the screen, check the inverter out. So, I can see a faint image, so I'm just gonna go by that. Here's another way where you can work on a screen like this. Actually, external monitor. I should be able to plug an external monitor into this screen and see a picture because it's not the graphics on the inside that's bad, it's the screen that's bad. And there it is. So now I can work with this computer at least enough to turn it off properly. Shut it down. Yeah, don't turn it off just using the power button. It's not good for Windows. Windows wants to be turned off when it wants to be turned off. It doesn't want you to decide when Windows goes off. So, you just do it the normal way. I've had a lot of customers come in with damaged operating systems because they just hit the power button and hold it for five seconds when they turn their computer off. You do it enough times and Windows goes, Windows technically says, look, forget you. If you want to keep doing that to me, I'm going to corrupt myself. Colon cleansers. I'm, I'm just, sorry guys if you don't know what I'm talking about. That's what Acid said in the chat room here. Did that, was there an ad for colon cleanser that came up on my video? <laughs> it did? I guess pod nuts means, maybe they're trying to interpret that to mean something bodily? I don't know. Because all those ads are contextual. They go, with, they, they go by what words are printed on the screen somewhere. And they actually go by what's written in the chat room. So... If you guys are writing stuff in the chat room, you might see an ad pop up related to what you guys are talking about. So, keep it clean. Okay. Now, how do we get this front panel off? It's a good question. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. What you do you have to do basically is take, um, there's usually screws on the front of the, the uh, computer, the front panel, and you can't see them because they're usually buried under these rubber nubs. If you can see, there's like rubber nub here, here, rubber nub here. And we're going to pull them off and we will see that there's screws under there. I use like a really small screwdriver to pull them off. Let me go get one. This is a really cheap, I think it costs one dollar at Micro Center. A set of these precision screwdrivers. And what I do is just, some of them you can take off with your finger. If you can take these nubs off with your finger, do it because your finger's not going to scratch the plastic like a screwdriver will. Now, you're also going to see that when you pull these off, you can't see it in the, oh yeah, you can see it in the video there. When you pull these off, you're going to get that sticky glue. There's a sticky kind of glue there. Well, you want to, that glue is what's going to keep these things on. Actually, let me unplug this real quick. And pull the battery out. Just in case the thing decides to turn on or something while, while we're working on it. Okay, so these nubs are, are kind of sticky and there's glue holding it in place. And a lot of times when you pull these off, right, 
the glue halfway comes off or all the way comes off or half of it's on here and half's on there. So I like to keep these in the correct order because this one was on the top right and I know that half the glue came off on this one. So I want to put it back in the same spot just so it everything sticks the way it should be when we took it like we took it off. If you start mixing them around, then one might have more glue on it than another one and it might not stick as good. Okay, that's number two. And then there's these two down here. Now these are not rubber things, they're little plasticky stickers, so we gotta get that off with a screwdriver. Okay. Now I kind of set them up in a little configuration here. Can you see it right there? That um, in the same configuration as I took them off the screen. This way I know which one goes where. Okay, now let's unscrew this and get to the inverter board. Here's another important tip. When you're unscrewing a screw from a laptop screen, you want to take your screwdriver and direction it, point it in a direction that if it slips off of the computer when you're unscrewing it, it doesn't scratch the screen. Like if I was unscrewing like at an, up at an angle like this on this screw and I lost my grip, it would go scratch and scratch the screen. So try to point your screwdriver a little bit in the opposite direction of the screen. So if it does slip off, it won't scratch your screen. So this I'm going to point a little bit downwards when I'm, when I'm unscrewing it. Just in case I slip, I don't hit the screen. I've done that before. All of the lessons I learned here, I learned the hard way. So. Same thing with these screws, guys. I like to... Um, I like to keep them in the same configuration as they came out of the screen because the screws themselves have glue on them too. And you just want all the glue to match up the way that it originally came off to keep the stickiness at a good level. Okay, now I basically just have to pry this front panel off. What I like to do is try to find a good spot that's going to come off easy with my fingernail. There we go. So I got a little traction there, so I kind of go with that. Start pulling it off around the edge. And once you get enough of it off, the rest kind of starts to just fall off on its own. Fingernails are a great thing for this. If you can help it, try not to use a screwdriver for this part or something metal because it'll probably scratch the plastic. Okay, so there's the inverter board down there. Now, we don't even have to take this screen out right at this point. The inverter plugs into the screen right here. Just showing it to the camera real quick. 
right here. That's where the screen plugs into the inverter. So we just basically going to unattach that and plug the new screen into there and test to see if the inverter is good. So let's see if we can get that out nice and easy. Just going to pull out some slack of wire here. So this is where the screen gets attached through these wires to the inverter. I'm just going to pull this out. Okay, now the inverter is unattached to the screen. Let me show the HD video, the same thing. The HD video camera is right above this camera, so I have to show it in two places. And then after this is over, I'll tell you why the, uh, the other HD video is not posted yet. I've been trying, guys, uh, really trying to get that posted. All right, well... I'm going to now take this screen, this broken one, that I know has a good bulb because when I took it out, I labeled it good bulb. I labeled it good bulb. And I'm going to plug it into the inverter and turn the computer on. Now, here's the thing. Here's one more thing before I do this. Notice these screens are not the same size. This one's a long, wide screen. This one's a 15-inch um, normal size screen, or it used to be normal anyway. These inverters are designed for different powers of bulbs here, you know. So it would be a good idea if you had a few of these broken screens that you could test it with, like three or four different ones. This way you could test to see if the inverter is bad because maybe this inverter doesn't have enough power to power this bulb. It's not really common, but it's, I mean, it's, it's not likely that that would be like that. But it could be that this inverter wouldn't power this bulb, even if the inverter was good. So try to, if you have a couple screens laying around, I brought a batch of like four of them out. I'm going to try them all on this, on this inverter, if the inverter doesn't work. Okay, that's plugged in now. So I'm going to turn the computer on. Oh, the battery's out. Okay, I'm going to turn this computer on. See what happens. Okay. It did not light up the screen. No light on that screen. So, I'm going to say that that inverter might still be bad. Let me test it with a couple other screens before I make my, my final decision here. When you're using an external monitor, sometimes you have to hit function, F4, F2, whatever the little uh, image is with the screen on your key there. That will turn on and off the external monitor. I just want to power this computer off and then I'll try another screen.
Okay, this is another screen I have. I wrote actually on the front here. It says, this is from an Acer 3680. Has a good bulb, but the screen itself is broken. So let me see if I can get this will power up. All right, this computer's taking too long. Don't do this at home. Pretend you're not watching. Okay. Well, let me take this screen off now. Unplug it from the inverter. And try this other screen, which is more of the size of the original screen. This is a 14 inch. This is a 15 inch uh, 4 by 3 screen. This is a 14 inch wide screen. So, it might be, the bulb might be more of the same size on this screen. Plug it in to the inverter. Okay. Turn the computer on and let's see if we get any kind of picture here. Any kind of bulb action. Nope. No bulb action here. Now we shouldn't be seeing the windows um, on this screen, even if it did work, because all I'm plugging into the screen here is the inverter. I'm not plug plugging in an LCD cable, which actually goes to the back of the screen. There's an LCD cable that goes from here all the way to the back of the screen and connects in the back of the screen up here somewhere. Uh, I didn't plug that into this screen. I just plugged the inverter into this screen. So let me unplug the inverter. Again, this isn't smart to do while the computer's running. That inverter actually puts out, I think it's like a thousand volts or some crazy number. So you don't want to get a shock by that. But uh, I, want, I want to show you this. There's the connector where the LCD cable plugs in. And it just plugs right, goes right up the back, plugs right into there, and then it usually ends up about right about there on the screen on the back. But we're, we're just testing the inverter to see if the inverter's bad or the bulb's bad, so we don't need to do that. We just have to plug this into the inverter and see if we get some light. We're looking for some light. And usually on these cracked screens, if the inverter is working, we'll get light. The whole thing will be gray with cracked colors, like looking colors all around the whole thing. And that didn't happen. So I tested two screens with this inverter. I'm going to determine at this point that the inverter's bad. So let me power this thing down again. And then I'll show you how I buy an inverter. Again, don't do this at home. Close your eyes. There, computer's off, magically. Okay, I'm going to unplug the power adapter. And we're going to pull the inverter out and get a model number off of it. Sometimes these inverters are hard to get out unless you take the whole screen out. But let's see what we could do here. Oh, this one's just kind of stuck in there, so... No screws holding this in. Just pops right out. That's unlikely, guys. Most of the time, there's screws holding these inverters in. And then just one little connector at the end here. We've got to unplug. Wires are delicate on the end here. You don't want to make sure you don't, um, you don't yank it. They're really small little wires. Let me see if I get my fingers in there. Well, this isn't cooperating. All right, let me see if I can get a needle nose, pair of needle nose to fix that. Ah, oh, this isn't going good. Come on out.
There we go. Yippee. Alright, so now we got the inverter out. Let's put this off to the side. Now, now, how can we do this? I want to be able to show my desktop. Well, here's what I'll tell you what I do. Um, this inverter is going to have a number on the back. Go on eBay and do a, a search for this number. On this one, it's AS023165-3AC-B3B. Do a search for that in um, in Google or, or in eBay. Let me just show the HD camera. Do a search for that number in eBay. It may or may not come up. If it doesn't come up, then use the model number of the computer. Do a search for Presario 2100 inverter. Oh. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, let me repeat that. You, you want to do a search for the model number on the on the inverter here, which is, and this one it's a two zero three one one six five a three dash b three b. Just do an eBay search for that. See if this inverter comes up. You might be able to get it for like twenty bucks or something. Um, and let me just show the HD camera again. And see if it comes up. And I'm, like I was saying, if it doesn't come up, if you do a search for that serial number or this model number for this inverter and it doesn't come up in eBay, then you got to resort to just searching by model number. This is a Presario 2100. So you do an eBay search for Presario 2100 inverter, which I'm going to do right now. Yeah, we could probably swing this. We'll probably swing this. Okay, so... Let's see... Start up Firefox. Go to eBay. And let me just type in this model number here. So we got an A2... Oops, I'm sorry. A S203. My bad. It is an AS0231 65 3A3 B3B. It's unlikely that this would come up, but let's try it. Ah, two of them. See, the reason you want to search by model number of the inverter is this inverter might be being used in a couple different boards or a couple different computers. So if you do a search by, by inverter, you might get better results than if you search by the model number of computer. Because this might be used in a 2100 Presario. And as eBay is saying here, it's also used in an NX9010 computer, which is also compact, or that might be an HP. Same thing. 1325, free shipping. It's a buy it now or best offer. Okay. Let's see if it's in the U.S. I like to buy from people in the U.S. Um, item location, Kentucky. All right, that's a bonus. Feedback, 98.8. That's not bad at all. And they're a power seller, and they have over 1,100 feedback ratings. So you know you're safe because um, only 1.2 times out of 100 has somebody left this guy negative feedback. So your chances of of having a good successful transaction are very high. Um, he's a power seller which says a lot and he's got all these feedbacks. It's a low price, it's free shipping, it's in Kentucky. I'm gonna buy this right now actually. I like buy it now in, in eBay. This one's a buy it now but it's not even in this country. It's for like 30 bucks. This one's 16 bucks. And this one, this is a used one. The other one was brand new. This is in Shanghai, China. Definitely going to buy the other one.
Buy it now. That's what we're doing. Okay, don't look at my password. Okay, I'm going to click continue. Commit to buy. Pay now. Come on, pay now. Okay, thirteen twenty-five. Can't beat that deal. It's a good deal. Okay, I'm gonna log in through PayPal. Don't look. And confirm payment. Thank you for your payment. Done deal. Now I just wait, and when it comes in, I install it, and that's that. So I'm not even going to put the thing back together because that would be a waste of work right now. What I'm going to do is take all the, the screws and stuff. I'm going to take all the screws and stuff over here, put them in like a little baggie or something, a little plastic bag, and then um, just hold it until the inverter comes in, install the inverter, and then put everything back together. Um, what Someone's asking in the chat, what do I charge a customer for that part? I'd ch probably charge them like 40 bucks, 35, 40 bucks. Any questions in the chat room there? Um, we'll go till 3 o'clock. I got one other thing I could show you. I'm, I have a laptop repair jack. Um, and I want to show you one technique I do. I'm not going to do the whole job, but I'll show you one technique. But as far as screen repair, ask, ask in, uh, in the chat room any questions you have. Um, I try, yeah, and that's 30, 40 bucks in addition to 79 for the labor. That's what I charge for that job. 79 for the labor, I would charge them 40 bucks for that part. No, no, bad dog is saying old 35 millimeter canisters and Altoid tins are great for storing parts. I'll show you what I use for storing parts too. You know, go to your local dollar store and you can buy like little, like Tupperware-y things. And they're, um, I think yeah, it was a buck for like three of these. And I use these all the time. I could put processors in there. They're really good. I'm actually going to put all the stuff in it right now. But uh, ask me any more questions if you have any more questions there in the chat while I'm doing this. Okay.